Diseases in soybeans can occur at any time during the growing season, so it's important to scout regularly. Becoming familiar with the symptoms of soybean stem diseases will help you make more informed decisions about crop and integrated pest management, or IPM. As an extension plant pathologist with Iowa State University, Darren Mueller emphasizes the importance of understanding stem diseases in soybeans, starting with scouting. There's a couple of different uh, categories of diseases that I, that I sort of think about when I think of stem, stem diseases. One is, is the ones that cause death so fast that the leaves will actually stay attached to the plant. Phytophthora might be an example. It's killing the plant so quickly that you actually have dead leaves attached to that plant. And then as you go into that patch, you're starting to look for signs of the disease or symptoms of that disease that might start to, to, to distinguish it. For example, white mold will have the white fluffy growth and the, and the big sclerotia that are on the stem. Charcoal rot, you're gonna have to split that stem and then, or, or scrape it back, and then you can start to see sort of that charcoal gray growth of the fungus, and, it's, and these are called microsclerotia, so it's just sort of peppered inside that stem. For stem canker, usually you'll have a lesion or a canker on the outside of the stem. It won't be anything necessarily on the inside. And so these are all just sort of extra clues you can be looking at on that stem to distinguish these diseases. Another group of uh, stem diseases, as you're out looking and scouting late in the season, would be the ones that cause yellow patches. And so a lot of times, uh, at least here in the Midwest, a lot of the, the, these yellow patches are just blamed on SDS. But in reality, there's a lot of other things that can cause these yellow patches. You can have potassium deficiency, uh, which sometimes will be calling top dieback. Uh, you can have uh, either, even soybean cyst nematode, stem canker, brown stem rot is another one where they're causing these yellow patches out in the field. So uh, just like with the other group of uh, stem diseases, this one, uh, once you get into that patch, you're gonna start looking for clues. So you're gonna to wanna to grab a couple of stems, you wanna start dissecting them. So split the stem, look at the inside of that stem, look at the pith, if it's brown, you might have brown stem rot. If it's white, but then you have sort of browning on the outside of the stem, uh, you might have a, a, a disease like Fusarium root rot or, or sudden death syndrome. Looking at that whole plant, look, up, look at the roots, and you can start to distinguish what, what's causing these yellow patches uh, out in the soybean field. Well, scouting is going to be with well, the backbone behind your IPM decisions. And so um, whenever you're making a decision to use a seed treatment or to use a, a foliar fungicide or even uh, decisions on crop rotation or, or whatever the management practice you're looking at, you know, a lot of it's going to be economics but it's also going to be dependent on what diseases are out in, the, out in the field. And so if you have a lot of sudden death syndrome, or if you have a lot of white mold, uh, you're going to be selecting varieties that, that have high levels of resistance. Seeing the diseases is going to be giving you that in-season management decision, but then IPM is across years. And so if you're not looking for diseases late in the season, uh, it, it'll be giving you clues as far as variety selection or even uh, management strategies, uh, that, that decisions that you're going to be making in that field for future years. In general, there's not a lot of thresholds for plant diseases. It's going to be up to the farmer to decide how much risk is he willing to take. And then that, that gets into the IPM decision, you know, looking at the weather patterns, how wet is it going to be the next couple of weeks, how much does the fungicide cost, and then weighing all of that information. As far as rotating fungicides, I'd say that uh, what diseases are present could be affecting that a little bit, but I'd say most of the products are going to be uh, premixes, and so there's protection as far as uh, if you need to be rotating or not, or if you can rotate or not, because these will have multiple active ingredients. It'd be more important to be deciding, do you need to be spraying or not? And so, like, if you're uh, battling frog eye leaf spot or some of the more persistent diseases in the south, the answer is probably yes every year, but if you get up into the Midwest, there's not a lot of foliar diseases that are going to be responsive to a, to a foliar fungicide, and so you have to get out there and be looking and, and seeing is it, is it really going to merit it or not. Visit cropscience.bear.us slash learning center to learn more about how additional best management practices can help soybean growers secure the best yields and return on investment. Always read and follow label instructions.